hello 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 everybody it is your girl brush and i'm back with another video don't forget to comment like subscribe hit the notification bell button so you never miss a video when i do upload and don't forget to share my videos wherever with whoever so they know you rocks with your girl though if you're new here hi hello and welcome if you've been here before what it do baby boo shout out to my subscribers i believe it's now 45 of you Mwah. you are my precious babies and my baby boos um did I say if you're new here, hi, hello, and welcome. If you've been here before, what to do, baby boo? Um, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell button. Always check the description bar down below where you will always find my perfectly curated playlist to all my previous content. Yes, 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 yes. Um, oh, if you've been watching my videos but haven't subscribed yet, why not? It's a party over there. It's free 99. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. That helps me. Whether y'all know it or not, if you're watching my videos but not hitting the, you know, hit the thumbs up button. That really helps the algorithm recommend my videos to other people who may not even know who I am. So when y'all hit the thumbs up and say, hey, so-and-so like this, so you might like this too. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and make it do what it do. Um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into this video. I'm going to try not to cuss too bad in this first segment because, you know... YouTube said we can't be custom within the first 15 seconds, but of course, my new intro, yeah, but we still try to, you know, push it back a little further so we can get into the famous little things. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So this is uh, just my two cents episode, whatever, another, but it'll be in the description once we get ready to edit this video, whatever the case may be. I haven't done a just my two cents lately because celebrities... Ain't been giving nothing, but child, the last couple weeks or whatever, they've been doing all of the things of the things, and I thought I'd come and give y'all just, just a few of the things that I wanted to talk about, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about, which is probably the most important thing that I want to talk about, is Chloe Bailey's album. If y'all don't know, last month, at the end of last month, Chloe album drop in pieces, honey, um it sold ten thousand units and was number 119 on the billboard 200 albums list come on i take my last cup of water let's take my water let's take my water honey y'all ever wonder why i don't drink the water y'all hear me drinking it you know well, I don't like that sound. <laughs> I don't like what other people make that noise. And I'm not. So I'd like to take one big sip and then gulp it down. One and done for me. Okay, so. Chloe's album first week did 10,000 sales. And was number 120, 119 on the 200 Billboard albums list. And of course the conversation has been who's to blame for Chloe's low album sales or lack thereof promotion and everybody in their mama wanted to blame beyonce and it's like no chloe's team is to blame that's who's to blame it's chloe's team because they dropped the ball um i just recently saw that she did do a um interview with the breakfast club i personally feel like that interview came a little too late for my liking i felt like when swarm first came out she should have been on the breakfast club not only promoting swarm but her new movie praise this which i have yet to watch and of course her album i feel like she had three major projects going on and she could have been up there at the breakfast club co-promoting them all i know that might have been class a or some shit you shouldn't be doing let me tell you something y'all gonna know everything i'm doing y'all gonna be anticipate swarm was already out praise this was getting ready to come out and so was her album so, I don't understand why the team dropped the ball on her sitting there promoting herself by saying, yeah, like, I understand you're supposed to be able to promote one thing at a time, but no, no, we're going to promote everything. Why? Because we're in the age of the 10-minute TikTok era where these people have short attention spans, okay? So, she should have been able to promote everything all at once because people have short attention spans attention spans but i do feel like her team dropped the ball with that i feel like um the fact that she was on jimmy fallon and 
I didn't see it, and I watched Jimmy Fallon damn near every night, and I don't remember Chloe's interview with Jimmy Fallon is a no-no. Um, I'm, she also, I believe, did an interview with Drew Barrymore. She talked about that on her Breakfast Club interview. And, you know, she talked about all the stuff people say and how when people say negative things, that does hurt her feelings because, you know, she's a sensitive soul. Um, she did basically sort of kind of in a roundabout way alluded to the fact that it was a whole lot of shit going on behind the scenes that came to basically what I just said, her team basically letting her down, the whole politics of it all. And I think it was because they were trying to predict or anticipate when Swarm, and I believe Praise This was all dropping, but again, the momentum of, they didn't even know, that, they didn't even have to know the release date. All they had to say was, yeah, I have another project, a movie coming out, Swarm, not exactly sure when it's going to drop. It's going to be a Peacock or Amazon Prime or wherever the damn movie at. Y'all know I got Swarm, the limited series I did on Hulu. And, of course, I have my, my debut album, In Pieces, coming out, where she could have sat there and said, so you guys know I released those, what, three or four singles a year and a half ago. No, they will not be on this album because... The vibe of those singles and the vibe of what I'm doing for my album are two completely, totally different things, but they're all me, but I want to introduce you guys to a different side of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, where was that? Where was that? Where was that? So, again, I blame her team, not Beyonce, because Beyonce in the middle of getting ready to give us all the things in this world tour we get. And by we, I mean the Beehive, even though I'm not going to go. But I know my fellow Beehive members going to record it. So, technically, I'm getting it too. Anyway, so who's to blame? Chloe's team, they dropped the ball. Because she could have been at so many other different talk shows and podcasts and radio shows. Like, that girl could have had an episode of Drink Champs. She could have been down there talking to Angie Martinez. Um, I believe she did talk to Angie Martinez to promote promote swarm i don't know if she talked about her album on there or not i probably have to go back and watch it um what else like she could have been talking to everybody everywhere so her team dropped the ball since we're talking about albums we're gonna talk about allegedly thieving ass tasha um if y'all don't know latasha scott uh soon to be ex-member of Escape and now solo inspirational artist, um, decided to finally make her debut out here with uh, Motown Gospel. And so she released um, her first solo project that she's been trying to get out for 30 years, honey. Um, what is this damn thing? What's the title of this album? I'm going to tell you what it's called. It's called... Um, What's the name of this album? Oh, The Invitation, A Conversation with God. And so, um, according to um, a Twitter account somewhere on Twitter, I don't remember. I just remember I typed in Latasha Sky album sales and the number popped up. And apparently Shorty sold 678 pure sale units. And as far as where she charted on the Billboard 200 album chart, she did not. And I believe she did not also, she didn't chart on the gospel charts as well. So I believe that's why she kept coming out and saying that charting didn't matter to her because she already knew what the numbers was going to do. I will say this. Latasha should have not released her album while this show was on. Especially because the way she was portrayed. Um, I haven't watched the other episodes. I've watched other people's reviews. Um, I have yet to watch them, but y'all already know how I feel about negative Nancy, Steven ass Tasha. Um, allegedly, because you know, I believe she did it, but allegedly, because I ain't got no money for her. Or Geppetto, big-headed ass. Um, so, I... Tasha, you gotta feel played. Like, congratulations. You played yourself. Like, you released this album that you have been bitching and complaining about for 30 years. 
saying that Candy had your album shelved when that lady had no such power. And you finally release your solo debut album and it's, it's damn near trash. I haven't listened to it. Um, I'll probably do a separate video of me actually listening to her album. Um, oh, a side note. As far as Chloe's album, I like six songs off of her album. She did Need Future on her album. And the one song that she made an interlude should have been the whole thing. So, as far as I feel about Chloe's album, I give her album a six and a half out of ten. Um, as far as Latasha's album, I have not listened to it yet. I will, and y'all figure out how I feel about it once I listen to it. Y'all will get a what I'm listening to review on that. But, Latasha, girl, you gotta feel played. You have to feel dead ass played that you sat there... And caused all this commotion and this confusion amongst your group. And you only sold 678 units. I don't know if that's the total or that's what her first week was. Because I believe she released her album right before Easter on Good Friday. But girl, you gotta feel played. <laughs> you gotta feel played. And then congratulations, you played yourself news um football star i hope i'm saying his name archery hakim um baby he is playing chess and not checkers because his soon-to-be ex-wife i don't know her name decided to file for divorce and wanted half half eddie y'all know where that's from let me know if you know where that's from if you don't know oh it's a very funny joke um <laughs> i said all the time when i think somebody said half um, it's an Eddie Murphy joke, by the way. Um, so Shorty decided to file for divorce and said she wanted half and was slowly hit with her skirt, skirt. You what you getting half of? Because he ain't got nothing, not a thing, nothing. Because everything is in his mama's name. Who his mama's name? Girl, you ain't getting a dollar out of him. Not a goddamn thing. Everything in his mama's name. That's right. Um, Arch Arif Hakim. I hope I'm saying that man's name right. He is a pro footballer in Monaco. Um, if y'all don't know soccer and other countries are called football, that's why they don't like American football. Because <laughs> you know they don't play with their feet, they play with their hands and stuff. So, um, yeah, his mama went ahead and said, go ahead, baby, slide all your money over here to me. Put it in mama's name. We're going to put it in the bank account. That hoe ain't getting nothing. Nathaniel. Not a dollar. So, little mama, I feel sorry for you because you thought you was going to get you a lick. You thought you was going to get you a come up and got played. <laughs> Congratulations. You played yourself. Girl. Y'all better learn. Y'all can't be out here trying to bury these men for their monies and not thinking they got stuff in place. Double sidebar. I read a story about this old man. Y'all Google it. I don't remember that man's name. But apparently, that man had married this young heifer. She had won his money. He took her down there to another country. I want to say Mexico. Divorced her because I think only in, Mex in Mexico or wherever they, he divorced her. And you only need one person to file for divorce. That man had been divorced from that lady for 20 years. And I think when she did decide to finally decide to divorce him so she could get half, she found out that that lady had, they had already been divorced. Girl, that was your boyfriend. <laughs> that was your boyfriend. That was no longer your husband. He was your boyfriend. Y'all go Google that story because that story was funny when I, when I read that. Y'all go Google that. Um, in... You got fat on your day off news? Mm -mm -mm. Baby CNN then told Dial let me get your shit, get your shit, and get out. Okay, CNN told Dial Lenny, thank you for your services. Okay, hit him with old nasty Shawnee O'Neal, honey. Well, technically, they didn't tell Dial Lenny. His agent called him and said, hello. Hey, Don girl. So, um, yeah, CNN said you ain't got to come in no more. Mm-mm. They say they're good on you, love. They're good on you. If you don't know, Don Lemon was um one of the anchors at CNN News. Um, if you ever watch um 
CNN like over the past what year or two when they did like the um the New Year's Rock and New Year's Eve. Now let me used to be down there in New Orleans, drunk boots, honey. All you got to do is YouTube drunk down limit, okay, and get your life. Um, but yeah, so CNN decided to part ways with Don Lemon because he was around there on some diva stuff, allegedly. That's what some people said. I don't know. I wasn't around there, honey. And they said Don made everybody feel some type of way, and it was time for him to go. They said, the door. Bye-bye. So, Don Lemon gonna bounce back or whatever the case may be. I'm about to bounce back. Bounce back. Bounce back. So Don Lemon gonna bounce back. He don't seem to press him and uh his boyfriend, whoever that white man he was with, was down there at the time 100 celebration gala dinner, whatever the hell he was at. Because he told the reporters, people, y'all more worried about me than I am. And it's just like, oh, see, girlfriend ain't even worried about y'all. She got that man. I hope, I hope, I hope Don got him a, a rainy day for her, honey. It's just those rainy days. Mm -hmm, not a wash away. Y'all know I had a ditty. Um, in sucks to be you news, some white man named Tucker Carlson, who apparently worked down there at uh Fox News, also got fired. But they, you know, Fox News was like, we parted ways, or we came to the mutual decision to part ways. Whereas Don Lemon told us, bitch, CNN determinated me whole, and I found this out through my agent. Now. Y'all see how that went about. Don Lemon told us and Fox News told us. You know, Don told us he got fired. And Fox News was like, us and this white man, Tucker Carlson, you know, we, we, we not kicking it no more. And all this happened on Monday. So, baby, Monday was the day everybody was losing their job, child. I was like, shit. Make sure I still got mad. <laughs> Bitch, no, I would, okay? But, yeah, Fox News and CNN is over there cleaning house. Um, it is to be said, because I watched the news yesterday or the day, that ESPN going to be cleaning house soon, too, child. Apparently, they already firing everybody who work, you know, behind the scenes. And come the summertime, ESPN going to clean house on screen. So, if you work at ESPN, bitch, you'd have been put on notice, and they fix to get rid of you. Okay. All right, so if you work at ESPN, girl, go on, start packing your shit up now, honey. Start stealing a little bit of shit, you know. Take you a staple or something. You know, see if you can sneak you a desktop out the back, bitch. They finna find you. <laughs> so, shit. And, all congratulations, sis. Um, Tia Mari and Corey Hard Hardrick. Hardrick. Child not pronounced their goddamn man last name. Tia and Corbin Child and finalized their divorce um six months after Tia filed for divorce. Um, I have to say that I feel like this is the best decision for Tia. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody gets tired of putting on facades and airs for the cameras and online and social media, and they get tired of that shit. And I feel like Tia got tired of the book. Um Waka cuss. You know, Ty got Tia got tired of the bullshit. And I say, girl, congratulations. Um, hopefully, you know, Tia take the next year or two to, you know, recover from the fact that Honey Man was together like damn it, I think twenty plus years. I think they was married for like eight or something. And or well, they was married for ten years and they was together for twenty. Listen, Tia been with that man for a long time. And so she needs the time to heal, okay? Plus, she got them two kids. Apparently, they're going to have joint custody of their kids. So that's good. Um, I don't know if he's trying to get spousal support or whatever the case may be. But, Corey, that lady not giving you none of her money. She don't, no, no thank you. You down there on the CW, on the homecoming, or whatever the fuck the name of that show is, baby. Find you something. Find you something to do, Okay. And leave to you alone. She didn't let you loose. Okay? Go about your business. Um, and child, what's going on over there in the palace news? Um, Charles and Harry low-key beefing because Harry gonna come around there to the coronation on the 6th of May, which is a Saturday, so I'm gonna be able to watch it down there because you know they're gonna put it on TV. And I gotta get up real early because, you know, they time difference and our time difference. 
But anyway, so apparently May 6th is Harry's oldest child, Prince Archie's birthday. And I think he's going to be four. Don't get me lying. I think the baby's going to be three or four. And so they said that Charles was allegedly supposed to be giving the baby a toast at the coronation. Well, when Charles found out that Archie ass wasn't going to be there, Harry apparently wasn't going to stay too long. Charles said, bitch, I ain't giving nobody a toast to nothing. Fuck that baby. <laughs> okay? Charles said, fuck that baby. And fuck Harry, too, since he don't want to stay too long. He come around here just to show his face. And allegedly, they said that since Harry ass ain't gonna be there too long. They set his ass in the back. He said, bitch, you wanna leave? I'm gonna sit you closer to the door. That way you can pop in and go. Bye, bitch. We ain't gonna miss you. The door. <laughs> so apparently Harry ain't gonna even be up front in the church, honey. They put Harry ass in the back. In the back, back. Poor Harry. They just treating him like a spare. <laughs> I ain't read his book. Have y'all read Harry's book? I waiting on the auto the audio book so I can listen to Harry read the book too. Um and a final bit of royalty news. The hood royalty that is. Um the palace is in shambles, honey, and the palace I'm talking about is in Atlanta. Um, because if, if y'all been living under a rock last week, Bambi, um, the bam, as Mama D called her, decided to get online and start a whole bunch of confusion, honey. So, backstory. Um, Lil Scrappy and Lil Scrappy's oldest child, his daughter Imani, or Imani as they like to call that child. I hate the little people that I like to talk. <laughs> I mean, I ain't got nothing against y'all. I just hate the way y'all talk. Like, y'all like, need a, a English book. Um... So, Imani was on her live or whatever. You know, she was excited about the fact she's getting ready to graduate, talking about prom and all of that. And people in the comments decided to be messy and was like, ask her about um, Bambi. And she was like, don't ask me about my stepmom. Don't ask me about that lady. And she was like, y'all don't see me post that lady. Y'all don't see me with that lady. Like, I'm not talking about that lady. Like, stop asking me about that lady, right? And, you know, she just kept reiterating that lady. And we all know, like, you know, if you're a child of, you know, a two-parent household where your parents are not together and, you know, your daddy got him another heifer, you know, she's that lady and you don't really fuck with her like that. I mean, you show her respect because you love your daddy, but at the end of the day, fuck that bitch. <laughs> but I don't think that was necessarily the vibe Imani was on when she, you know, was telling everybody, like, don't come over here with that messy shit. Like, that's, that's not what it is, but... I think every time people kept bringing her up, like, it was more of that. Can y'all please stop asking me about that bitch? So that definitely was the undertone of the couple times she was saying it. But the first time she said it, that wasn't the vibe. So, um, Bambi, I guess, posted a picture of herself in her confessional for her love of hip-hop and lady. It was, like, giving that lady or whatever and I heard that apparently Erica was the one who popped off first, not the Bambi. I heard it was Erica who popped off first was, was like, you using my child for a storyline or don't be saying no shit to my child or something along those lines. And so that's when the Bambi went off and was like, um, you know, allegedly, you know, your daughter was confining me when you was allegedly over there putting hands on her, pop popping and all type of stuff. And then she put up a, um, a police report, an incident report of a time when Erica had came over the house to pick up Imani and they had basically reported to the police that they had seen a bruise on Imani and that allegedly they believed that Erica had did that or whatever. And then she had put up a, a, her recording a conversation between her and Lil Scrappy. Well, she was basically trying to get Lil Scrappy to basically insinuate that Erica be over there allegedly abusing her kids. And that, you know, Imani be starting shit between her and her mama. And, you know, Erica went and gathered her real quick. Like, yeah, if I was me, you know, she got on her live and she gathered her. And was like, I understand why you feel the way you feel. Because, baby, if I was me, I'd be jealous too. She was like, of course, yeah, you posted a police report, whatever. I could go down there and file a police report too. Don't mean it's true. She said, but of course, how about you let them know that I went through all the processes 
And guess what? I still have my kids. You and Scrappy are both disgusted for trying to get my kids taken from me for alleging that I'll be over here, you know, putting my hands on my kids. Like, that's not what that is. Um, and then, of course, you know, Imani also, oh, Erica also told Imani, like, don't, don't get into it. I know you 18, but I got it. So, of course, Imani did also come back and she basically let it be known, like, look, that incident report you talking about, my mama had popped me in my mouth and basically let me know, I know I got a smart mouth and she popped me in it. But let's talk about you and how allegedly, she didn't say that, but I'm saying it. Allegedly, you be running and having my little my siblings dirty. Like, let's talk about that. Like, how allegedly you over there not, you know, taking care of my siblings properly. And how, you know, you need 50 11 people to help you take care of these kids. And you can't handle your three kids on your own. How, let's talk about that. And how about the fact that apparently or some type of way Bambi Mama had called um, Imani a label whore. And basically told the girl she was going to jump on her and all type of shit. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on over there, honey? And then, you, of course, you know, Mama D went ahead and finally said her piece. I was like, child, I know all this shit ain't going to go on. Mama D ain't going to say that. So, Mama D basically reiterated that she got Erica back. She got Imani back. And that Bambi was dead ass wrong for even saying anything to an 18-year-old. Um, and that however you felt you know, moving forward with this divorce, you had no right to come at Imani or Erica the way that you did. Now, a lot of people, I guess, feel some type of way that Erica said something first and, I guess, blew it out of proportion. But here's the thing. You're using that lady to be funny when my child didn't even mean it that way. And, yeah, you might have been embracing it, but I still feel like you moving funny. So that's how Erica felt. Not me, but that's how Erica felt. And so, I guess, what, maybe a day or two later, Baby came out and, you know, basically said she apologized to everybody and she shouldn't have did what she did. And Mama D immediately called bullshit and said the only reason you apologizing, Apollo line, is because the internet turned on you and nobody had you back when you were sitting there secretly recording my son trying to coach him to do something to benefit you. I'm rewriting and paraphrasing because what Mama, what Mama D said didn't make not a lick of sense. But I was able to read it a couple times to so why I made it make sense. Um, so Mama D basically said, yeah, the only reason you apologize is because the internet turned on you. That's the only reason you apologize. Because the people turned on you. The internet is fickle, honey. They blow wherever the wind blow. One day it's up, one day it's down. And around and around. Girl, don't trust the people on the goddamn internet. But you was a fool for even posting that on the internet. Think somebody was going to have your back. Bambi. So a lot of people speculating that this may be a storyline for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Who knows if it will play out? I'm gonna be on the lookout to see if we get this one Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Um, yeah, y'all. So that was the just my two cents. Keeping up with what's going on with the celebrities. Baby, these people is crazy, okay? Crazy. Okay, that is all. That is it, y'all. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell button so you never miss a video when I do upload. And don't forget to share my videos, whatever, with whoever's gonna know you rock switch girl, though. Okay, love you, bye. Mwah.